What's up guys, this is Bus Saiyan here coming at you with another Star Wars CCG starter deck profile. Today we're looking at the Death Star 2 light side pre-constructed starter deck. And just like how I did with the dark side starter deck, I'm going to go through this deck in quite a lot of detail. So let's start right at the beginning. First of all, so this is really cool because... You obviously, uh, you obviously get a full uh, 60 card playable deck with the uh, <laughs> very uh, concentrated rulebook, so to say. There really isn't uh, a lot of extra details in here besides how to play the game, very, very basically. Um, and then so... Uh, we get a starting interrupt, which is headed for the medical frigate. Uh, as usual, most people will probably use it as a starting interrupt, uh, where you can deploy up to three effects, and obviously each of them must be deployed to the table. It doesn't cost anything, and then you need to alter. And this then goes to your lost pile. So let's look at the three effects that you actually can play. Uh, so it's pretty well designed because well you can't really go wrong. You only get three effects in the whole deck. So obviously the idea is that you can immediately start with these with uh, heading for the medical frigate. Uh, really cool is that you do get a copy of squadron assignments. Uh, and to make sure that you know which pilots you can get and which ships you can get with squadron assignments, I'm going to go through them in a second. But first... Uh, we get Battle Plan. So Battle Plan is another fairly staple uh, uh, starting effect for the game. Uh, you, uh, you may initiate battles for free, and uh, all, uh, the, all your opponent's force drains, uh, they must first uh, use three force to initiate that. Um, and um, what else does it say? Uh, uh, unless that player occupies a battleground site, and a battleground system. So obviously, the name of the game is to to try and make sure that um, obviously you control um, pretty much what el whatever is in the game. But certainly, battle plan, particularly early game, can be pretty pretty cool. Uh, and then we have superficial damage. Superficial damage, the third effect, a deploy on table each turn. Each of your characters, vehicles, and starships may forfeit. One of its weapons, except lightsaber, using forfeit value of three. Uh, also, your forfeited weapons go to your used piles, so it can be useful. And we do get quite a decent amount of weapons again in this deck, so uh, you know that could be um, really making sure that your ships, your characters, stay in the game uh, long enough. But let's come back to Squadron Assignments. I love this effect, by the way. I think it was an absolute blessing for the game to get a Squadron Assignments. Let's look at then what we can dig for with Squadron Assignments. I pre-selected these cards. So starting with Red Squadron 4, we've got its matching pilot, Derek Hobby. Uh, well, basically just called Hobby, obviously. Uh, Clivian. Uh, and they, they work really nice together, uh, obviously you get Red Squadron 4 down, may add one pilot, Hobby deploys minus 2, so Hobby can deploy for free, fairly straightforward with these uh, uh, pairs. Um, when firing X-Wing laser cannons, um, I think there's one or two in the deck. Uh, I am actually... Uh, Incorrect. I apologize. There are none in the deck. Uh, you may use two force. Uh, make x equal three. Uh, when hobby piloting, we get plus two maneuver and immune to attrition less than four. So basically, with with hobby, we get a ship that is uh, five power, six maneuver, immune to attrition less than four. Because obviously, hobby adds plus one, uh, plus two power. If he's at the same side as Biggs and adds two power to anything he pilots in a regular basis, um, so that will make on default Red Squadron four uh, five power potentially a seven power, but uh, we don't have Biggs, uh, I believe, in this particular deck. 
um, which is not really a problem. It just kind of points to the direction that obviously this can uh, be uh, heavily uh, customized. And uh, obviously, if you want to focus in on the squadron stuff, then by all means, do get that beautiful Death Star 2 bigs uh, into your deck as well. I do have a copy now. Beautiful. It is uh, foil. Looks great. It's from Reflections. Uh, -da 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 -da. And if uh, Hobby is at the same location as the Star Destroyer, he actually adds plus three to the power. So really nice little combo there. And when piloting Rogue 4 uh, also adds two to Maneuver. Now, because obviously this Hobby is originally a Hoth card, that's why we got the reference to Rogue 4. It works beautifully with Red Squadron 4 as well. So this is our first pairing. Moving on. We have Red Squadron 7 with Kier, what's his name, Kier Santage. So we have Red Squadron 7 may add one pilot, Kier Santage deploys minus two, so again, basically you can deploy for free. Your other, your other Red Squadron fighters at same location are maneuver plus one. Eagle Eye will have noticed that obviously like Red Squadron 7 is one of those ships. And then Kier adds plus two to five anything he pilots when at a system, sector, or docking bay. Once during each of your deployed phases, may struck to two from uh, deploy plus to one of your unique X Wing deploying here. Again, you can basically free play Red Squadron 4 and Derek Hobby onto it if you have Kier out with Red, Red Squadron 7. So you go out, search for Red Squadron 7 or Kier, depending which one you got in your hand. Then next turn you go ahead and hopefully you'll be able to to get these two and these just come down for free like that, which is amazing. Uh, <clears throat> moving on now we have Gray Squadron uh, stuff. Let's look at Gray Squadron one. Uh, its matching pilot is Kin Kinkian. Uh, may have two pilots or passengers. Ion cannons may uh, fire for free abro aboard. Each uh, one of uh, its ion cannon weapon destiny draws are plus two, which is pretty fantastic. Immune attrition less than four when uh, Kian, or uh, same as piloting, obviously we have Kian and Kian to do that piloting. Adds one to power of anything he pilots, while abroad uh, your starship adds two to each of its weapon destiny draws, while aboard a unique gray uh, squadron Y-wing, which is this one. At a system or sector, adds one to each of your force drains here. Fantastic stuff. Um, you can literally just uh, get this down for, uh, obviously it's going to be a little bit more costly, get it down for a four, um, perhaps a little more reinforcement, or maybe uh, a system that your opponent doesn't necessarily care too much about, and you can just carry on force draining that, with obviously having some backup that you can move guys over in case your opponent does decide to take out this guy without a destiny draw that can be obviously definitely something to keep an eye on and then the fourth and last matching pairing here and it's really interesting because we get grace quadrant 2 we got carry net and if you look at carry net i mean that's surely not uh an actual uh photo uh or or you know cut out from the original film that is drawing that is 100 percent a drawing uh, so may uh, add two pilots or passengers again as the usual stuff with the uh, uh, the Y-wings, the bombers, they can have two uh, pilots. Uh, immune to attrition less than three when Lieutenant uh, Tel Shij or uh, Kiri Nath piloting. When both, then it's immune to attrition less than five and has one battle destiny to total power only, which is still fantastic. But anyway... It's only a one deploy, so that's really, really cheap. Uh, and then we got Neth to deploy, adds two to power of anything, you pi anything she pilots, while aboard your starship adds one to each of its weapon destiny draws, and two if it's a Grey Squadron 2, uh, or when with uh, what's it, Tel Telsage. Yeah, Telsage. So that's uh, pretty fantastic, because obviously that will make a pretty nice little um uh, pretty nice little range of cards uh starfighters and pilots that we can immediately pick out with squadron assignments 
Moving on, let's uh, look at the remainder of our ships. <clears throat> Might as well. So we got a Y-Wing from Premier, just a very straightforward one deployment cost. Um, may have one pilot or passenger, permanent pilot provides ability of one. It's great that we get a permanent pilot on these guys, uh, but we do have quite a few pilots to potentially boost these up as well. That ability of one is not too bad still, uh, but it's mostly cannon fodder really. Uh, we got two X-Wings. Against uh, from Premier as well, two cost uh, with a permanent pilot providing an ability of one, a uh, little bit higher. Uh, well, actually, quite quite a lot. So, like basically, on the Y wing we get uh, two attrition, um, and on the X wing we got four. We get uh, two A wings. Uh, sorry, uh, three A wings actually. Uh, obviously, very staple stuff for uh, Death Star two. Uh, two deployment cost permanent pilot again with an ability of one opponent may, may not react or move from here which is really important um, you can have uh, a, a fairly decent little hold the ground with these a-wings in play power minus one when opponent has a starfighter present uh, with a higher maneuver well with a maneuver of five that would pretty much mean that your opponent would have to have one of their uh, unique starfighters out with its matching pilot to really be able to go to maneuver of six or high. Um, it is perhaps possible, but still a really great little cheap starting uh, A-wing there. And then we get three copies of uh, B-Wing Bombers, uh, another cool little ship, a little bit more expensive, but we also get more power. Obviously, with, with it be, being a B-wing and being a bomber, it's a very slow maneuver. Um, we can add one pilot, which suspends the permanent pilot. Uh, permanent Again, permanent pilot provides ability of one. Uh, and may fire two or more weapons during battle. Each of its iron cannon weapon destiny draws are plus three. So again, if you feel the need to put in some iron cannons, which I certainly would, then your B wings will be working really nicely with that, alongside your uh, was it Red Squadron? Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, Red Squadron four with its uh, what did we call it? X wing laser cannons. There you go. And then we have uh, last but not least the quote unquote capital flagship for the deck. Three copies of the Nebulon B frigate. Uh, may have four pilots, four passengers, and two starfighters. A decent little ship, certainly for a five cost, power four armor five, hyperspeed four, uh, and has ship docking uh, capability. Permanent pilot provides ability of one, turbo laser batteries, and laser cannons may deploy abroad, aboard for free. And that's basically our uh, uh, our uh, flotil. Uh, we get sixteen uh, different kinds of uh, spaceships uh, that we can uh, navigate with, and obviously a bunch of them does come with a permanent pilot, for a better or worse. We'll be the judge of that. Let's move on to our uh, characters. Uh, we get an Admiral Akbar, really, really fantastic. In fact, I'm going to show you the three highlights of this deck, Admiral Akbar, Chewbacca of Kashyyyk, and General Solo, um, as well as obviously getting your uh, starting interrupt and a bunch of effects. I think these starter decks are really a good starting point, uh, and they're still relatively inexpensive to get compared to certainly many other uh, old uh, Star Wars CCG products. So Admiral Akbar, four deployment, but it deploys minus two to home one as three to power of any capital starship he pilots. Your capital starships deploy minus one to same system. Once per game, may take one Mon Calamari character or Admiral's order into hand from reserve deck and reshuffle. Well, we don't have any of those, but again, as I said, a really cool starting point for a deck to then be um, obviously modified. Then we got Chewbacca of Kashyyyk. Uh, power 6 ability 2 for a 6 uh, cost character, that's pretty neat. 
the plus minus to an Endor, adds two to pyre of anything he pilots when, uh, oh by the way we got a bunch of Endor stuff in the deck so he's usually gonna come down for four. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, when targeted by a weapon, may roar, uh, which means his defense value equals 4, you know, that replaces the ability. Uh, when an Endor, during your deploy phase, may deploy uh, Lumat and or Wuta for free from reserve deck. We don't have Ewoks in the deck, uh, but again, it's like, you know, because these two guys are obviously taken out of Endor, you got that connection there. And then we have General Solo. Uh, deploys minus on Falcon, uh, Tyridium, or Andor, and three to power of anything he pilots. When in battle with Chewie or another of your scouts at an exterior site, may use two force to cancel one opponent's battle destiny just drawn, which is fantastic, absolutely brilliant. Immune to attrition less than three, and you obviously get a power at four ability three, four, very likely four cost because again you're probably gonna put him onto Andor and then maybe put him up to a ship uh, on the Andor docking bay or something like that. But we're gonna get to the locations in a, a little bit. Uh, besides that we get two copies, don't ask me why, I think it would be cool if we got all three uh, to deploy but we do get two copies of Grey Squadron Y-Wing Pilot, two cost power, two ability two, two to power of anything he pilots when piloting a Y-Wing draws on battle lesson if not able to otherwise again making it fantastic and of course we do have um, is it three Y-Wings in the deck uh, that he can jump onto uh, da -da 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 -da. E two one jeez you only get the one my apologies uh, unless you obviously decide to put him on um, one of the Grey Squadron's ships, uh, if for any reason you can't get the matching pilot for that. That can happen. Um, then we got uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, when a starship he pilots, uh, fires an ion cannon once per turn, may draw two weapon destiny and choose one of, the, one of them. So that's pretty decent. Uh, and then we get Corporal Midge. Uh, she's more of the uh, ground troop soldier to put her down with Chewie uh, and uh, Han onto the surface. Adds one to each of this character uh, of his. Oh, sorry, his. Oh, okay. Well, upside down. He looks like a she. I apologize. Corporal Midge, Mister. As one to battle, uh, his character weapon destiny uh, uh, draw uh, weapon destiny draws two when firing uh, a rifle, and all your ability here is provided by scouts, which is fairly easy to get. Again, Solo is a scout, and of course Chewbacca is a scout as well. So again, as I said, ground troops, ground troops. Uh, and then while on Endor, adds one to your force drains at your exterior Endor sites where you have a scout of ability less than two uh, and no Ewoks. Uh, continuing with the ground troops, we've got Sergeant uh, Junkin, uh, three cost, a uh, little bit better as well than Corporal Midge. Uh, when at uh, bunker, adds one to deactivate the shield generator toll for each explosive charge there. We obviously don't have those things. Uh, when Junkin uses a concussion grenade, all your characters are immune to that grenade uh, and you may add or subtract one uh, from weapon destiny draw. We got two copies of E.T. or uh, also known as the uh, uh, Dressalian Commando. Power plus one when at a forest, jungle or exterior and or site, so that's not going to be a problem. When in battle at an exterior side uh, against a non-unique alien, adds one battle destiny total uh, power only. Prevents opponent from drawing uh, more than one battle destiny and is immune to attrition less than four. So those are pretty fantastic effects there for ET. And then moving on we have Corporal Utani. Once during each of your deployed phases, 
may deploy one uh, artillery weapon or a portable fusion generator, same side from reserve deck, and may move a medium repeating blaster cannon uh, by himself. Uh, now those things aren't really gonna come uh, in action with this particular deck, but we're really just looking at, we got two abilities, two abilities, two abilities, he's a one ability guy, uh, potentially to go and uh, and give us four ability, for example, with Solo or Akbar, if Akbar is on the planet. Moving on, uh, we have Corporal Beezer, prevents opponent from reacting to same side, which is pretty neat. Once during each of your deployed phases, may deploy one device to same location from reserve deck, reshuffle rebels of ability less than three, and end all rebels are immune to scanning crew. And then we have Corporal. Uh, Delavar, another two ability character, prevents your characters from having their forfeit reduced at same location. Um, when with your FX droid, once per turn allows your character just forfeited from same site to be uh, placed in a used pile. And last but not least, we have Corporal uh, Jose. Jose, Jose, Jose. When firing a character weapon, adds one to each weapon that's in draw. When Jose fires an A280 sharpshooter rifle um, at a character at an adjacent site uh, and is using, a, sorry about the mess, it is a used interrupt. Now, to beef up these guys a little bit, we do get two copies of Blastec E11B Blaster Rifle. Uh, fairly inexpensive, you can deploy for two force onto a scout warrior. May target a character, creature, or vehicle using one force draw destiny target hit. If destiny is higher than the defense value of the target, and may fire repeatedly for two force each time. So it can be pretty good with that repeat fire uh, effect there uh, to be able to take out some of your opponent's um, weenies. In terms of uh, starship weapons, we have a couple of uh, high um, destiny number torpedoes in this deck as well. Uh, but first, let's look at some of the more generic stuff. So we got uh, Enhanced Proton Torpedoes for X-Wing, Y-Wing, or B-Wing. So it works on most of our ships, except the, the Nebula Frigates. Um, may target a starship using one force, draw destiny, add one if targeting capital starship, otherwise subtract one. Target hit if its total destiny is higher than defense. And obviously, it being a torpedo, it's a one-use thing. Uh, we got two concussion missiles. Uh, now we got four destiny values. So this is a little bit better. Um, use one force to deploy on your bomber, A wing, uh, freighter, or transport. So these really are going to go on the A wings or the bombers. Um, you may target a starship free, draw destiny, add one if uh, targeting a starfighter or a squadron. And the uh, target is hit if its total destiny is higher than the defense value. But the big ones, uh, and again, we've had pretty much the same uh, the same card uh, content in the dark side starter as well. We get two missiles with uh, seven uh, destiny value. Obviously, these are from A New Hope. Deploy on your B-Wing, uh, perhaps Falcon, if you want to upgrade the deck. May target a capital starship for free. Draw destiny at three if that capital starship was targeted by another weapon this turn. Uh, target hit if total destiny is higher than defense value after firing replace. Uh, and you put this in the use pile. Um, interesting, because obviously these, these don't actually say that. So perhaps they stay on the ship. I'm not sure I would have to look up the rulings for these uh, different torpedoes. And then... Let's look at our uh, planetary systems. Let's look at our locations and then finish off with the interrupts. Uh, so we get a Bespin system. Um, I mean, any of these can be fairly straightforward starting locations. I would probably go with Endor, though. 
uh, rather than Bespin. But yeah, we get Bespin, Tatooine, uh, Solust, and Andor uh, for our planetary system, 6, 7, 7, and 8 parsecs. Um, and then we do get four ground locations, and all four are for Andor, as I said, for the ground troops. So we get uh, a great forest, we get the landing platform, really good docking bay there, and we get a hidden forest trail, and we get the light side back door as well. So we do have, obviously, all these sides being battleground sites, um, but most of them are uh, pretty good in terms of uh, giving us more force than they do give to the opponent. So we got Bespin, Tatooine, Solace. We also have the Andor Hidden Forest Trail, uh, which will give us two and only one to our opponent. And then we got Andor, Andor Backdoor, uh, the Landing Platform, and the Great Forest, which adds equal amounts of um, force to both ourselves and our opponents. Uh, I think probably the highlight of these decks would of these cards would be the Hidden Forest Trail. During the move phase, your scouts may move between here and any exterior and or site. Uh, so that makes it a pretty cool little trick where you got all these other, obviously, exterior sites as well. You got basically free range wherever you can move between these four. Um, you obviously can go anywhere else with your docking bay. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, oh yeah, uh, our uh, we are pretty good with this because we have all the scouts. Right. Okay. So that's about it. I think obviously most of the action will probably be in space. Uh, obviously, the deck is geared more towards uh, space battles than ground battles, but even if we do have to go down the ground, we have a fairly decent set of uh, locations uh, for that. And then finally, let's look at the interrupts. We get two copies of a few maneuvers. Fantastic, again, a six destiny value there. Also adds two to hyperspeed uh, and maneuver of any starfighter for the remainder of this turn, and obviously that maneuver can be really important for the defense value. Uh, the interrupt may even affect the uh, imminent uh, outcome of a destiny draw, targeting a starfighter's maneuver. So there you go, uh, you get that. But obviously it's mostly in there for the high destiny value. We get a copy of uh, Hujix. Um, if you just forfeited all your cards that participated in the battle you lost, cancel all remaining battle damage from that battle, or cancel showdown. Uh, then we get a copy of Grimtosh, uh, used uh, interrupt uh, if opponent has 13 or more cards, they must discard down to 8, which is pretty good, or as a lost interrupt, cancel uh, Molator, um, or use for force to reveal opponent's hand. All cards uh, that your opponent has multiple copies of, they must discard. Uh, are lost, actually. Sorry. Uh, so two copies of Grimtosh, actually. Sorry, so we got a bit of a hand control there. You can also peek into our opponent's hand. Pretty cool little card there, actually. I do like the combo one a little bit more. I think that's with... Um, oh, I'm trying to think there. Um, never mind. But the uh, yeah, the Reflections combo is even better. Uh, and then we got Take the Initiative, another used or lost used. Uh, if all of your ability in this battle is provided by Scouts and or Spice, they each add one to your total battle destiny. Six is the limit or lost for the remainder of turn. Your unique Scouts and unique Spies are each power plus one. Steady Aim. Uh, add X to one Starship Weapon Destiny drawn when targeting your opponent's Starship. And the X equals to if you play it as used, and 4 if you play it as a lost. And then another nice 5, fairly decent little uh, destiny cause there. Uh, careful planning. If you play it as a used one, if a battle was just initiated, draw destiny and uh, activate up to that much force. That can be a pretty good little surprise there. 
and you could also use it as a starting effect to uh, basically uh, deploy from reserve deck one battleground side um, and I don't really think we're gonna use that for but it's nice to have that potential uh, to to change up heading for the medical frigate if you really want to so in summary, this deck I think is a really neat little starting point. It can certainly get uh, a player into the game, particularly if one can get both a copy of the light side and the dark side deck for themselves. Uh, the deck is generally a little bit more geared towards space battles, which of course is many people's favorite element of this game. But you know, we get a bunch of usable moving parts like heading for the medical frigate and we actually do get three uh, effects to deploy with it uh, we do get four separate um, unique ships with their pilots uh, and we do get some other bits and bobs as well so it's a uh, it's a relatively decent little deck and then we also get general solo obviously he's, a, he's really good both with piloting or being down on the ground same for Chewbacca and then Akbar can go into one of the uh, Nebula frigates and and just uh, you know cause some havoc there with a little bit of extra support with some weapons, a couple of high destiny draw cards. Uh, we've basically looking at a really really sweet little starting deck in this. Uh, both the light side, this one obviously, and the dark side equivalent too. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm not going to uh, blabber about this any longer. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, check out the dark side uh, starter deck as well. And up until next time, Boston signing out. Peace.